to test it out in order to like know what the hell we're doing so that we don't shoot ourselves in the face. Moxie, you're fine, you're fine. Moxie, Greg, and I are riding around the world to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. We're donating 10% of roughly sales to the fundraiser and posting a new episode every week. It's a big dog on two wheels adventure for girls empowerment. So follow along and please lend your support. So you clearly have that underwater log out there that you've got to be aware of. Oh, I ain't gonna live like this no more. Most of my life's been waging war. Till I found peace, I could have swore. I'm gonna go in after the line that what we did, snagged. It's like I'm way like over it. here. Yeah. The idea would be to be able to kind of pull it from the backside. It's time to bathe anyway. It's not getting any warmer. What are you doing? Taking a moment. Is that necessary? Creatures in the wild with glasses. Oh, under he goes. Like the loon. Oh. And? Oh my god, you got it? Yep. Moxie, go save Papa Bear. about 5 30 in the morning and we are totally under siege there are just absolutely dozens of mosquitoes that are between the fly and the tent we are totally safe as long as we are inside the tent but there's nowhere to pee inside the tent or make breakfast or start a fire that will eventually keep the mosquitoes away it's an interesting way to do it a sweater still on I don't know if this is going to work. Yesterday evening, my spoon got caught as I was just trying to fish at like nine o'clock. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll just get it in the morning because I could see where it was. It was just out here that I got log. And so I, this morning, while Greg is making coffee, I first tried with my pants on, but it was too deep. And then I tried with just my leggings on and it was too deep. So then I took them off, and then as I got in there, I had to actually take off my sweater. So that's what I did, and I got it. So Jess, you're parked on this uh, downward slope. What is your parking strategy here? Are you thinking maybe that you will hop these logs, come into the campsite, turn around, and then shoot up the other side? I think if I were alone, what I would do is I would try and roll back, because there's also a slope that way, try and roll back so that I could like a hundred point turn it this way. Mm. So if you were alone, you'd probably go find help. <laughs> <Perhaps>. <laughs> Maybe you'd connect Moxie to the back and mush her. So my bike has been squeaking lately. Yes, squeaking. It's happened probably the last three, four days, and I've been trying to diagnose it. It's either the um, shock or the brakes. And I know that that doesn't sound connected at all, and I'm not suggesting that it is, but those were the two things that were dealt with in Seattle and that sort of have, uh, were the last thing that could happen. So basically, I would think that that's a shock thing, but actually what I found is that when I put just a little bit of oil on the, the rear rotor, and I know that that's not a good thing, but hear me out, it actually stopped that sound. So I think that sort of under pressure, under load, there's something about how the disc is sitting or how the pads are sitting on the disc that's different from like uh, when it's just on the center stand because then it rolls fine. And so when it's under load, something's happening that's like, 
creating this effect and it's rubbing a little bit. So um, it doesn't, it appears to be cosmetic at this point or at least uh, auditory because it's riding fine, the brakes are working fine, the shock is working fine. So I think at Smithers where we have our next sort of work period, I'm gonna have to dig into this and see if I can figure it out. Well, I left Chattanooga, boy, had a dollar and a dime. I headed out from Nashville on the hard rock line. I'm working on that old steamboat and learn to ride the steam. My bike sounds like a sex motel. If you like what we're doing, here's how you can support the Go Roughly Around the World adventure. You can donate to our Girl Up fundraiser, become a Patreon supporter, purchase Roughly gear for your dog and everyone you know, and of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, and now back to the adventure. Today yeah. is about getting to Smithers, where we have some goodies that are hopefully coming to us, and we will spend a couple of days working. But on the way, we have detoured off to Fort St. James, which has something that's kind of a little special. Simon Fraser and John Stewart were the ones who founded Fort St. James, and then they sold it off to the Hudson Bay Company. And this was like a primary trading post with the Indians. Uh, I think this was, I guess, in the 1800s. Um, and this was like this, the administrative center for New Caledonia. We're having a bit of a walkabout to just sort of take it all in. And our very special event starts in just 15 minutes. We are in the fur warehouse of Fort St. James. And so this is like all the examples of the types of furs that they would have traded back in the day. And uh, it's great because they've got like the photos of the creature and then the, the fur, the pelt of the animal. Oh, look, this is a coyote. What is that? Or a wolf. What's it called? Beaver caster? If you had to choose, gun to your head, which one? It's a hard choice. There's some other ones over here I need to, to pet to just see which ones are the softest. Okay, go, go, pet, go pet, pet some furs. Just about five minutes until the special event. We're hustling over to the location. I am all aglow about this. We've done a whole hundred kilometers out of our way to come for this special event. To the Fort St. James Chicken Racing Speedway. Who are you gonna bet on, Jess? I thought, because we're both really hungry right now, we would do food things. Buttermilk, butter, and Cisco. <laughs> In lane two, I tell her the head. <laughs> In lane three, chicken nuggets. In lane four, chicken fingers. And in lane five, all the way from India, butter chicken. In three, two, one, and let the birds fly free. I won one out of three. Cisco, my duck, won the chicken race. <laughs> yes, our special event for the day was the chicken races. And as it turns out, extra special because it was also a duck race. This is as advertised on like billboards sort of throughout this region of BC. World class chicken racing. And I must say it is not false advertising. It is true. World class. I mean, I don't know if there are any other classes but this is definitely in a class of its own and it's in the world. And it was mother clucking awesome. <laughs> this morning we're leaving Smithers in British Columbia and the route is gonna really start taking us north now, the hard push north. First on the list is a place called 
Salmon Glacier. So this is like the only glacier that uh, I think that I'm aware of where you can actually like drive up to it pretty much. So there's this spe supposedly spectacular viewpoint. It actually involves crossing back into the States, into Alaska at Hyder, and then almost immediately crossing back into British Columbia. It's a bit of a haul. It's, it's about three and a half hours or so to get to Stewart on British Columbia side. And then it's a good 35 plus kilometer gravel road up to the glacier viewing point. It is all of a sudden carving through a valley of tall mountains, snow on the peaks, snow on the sides. The temperature drops dramatically. And in these conditions with the clouds and the mist and intermittent drizzle, it really all of a sudden feels like you're no longer in summer. It has been a long 300 plus kilometer morning to reach Hyder, Alaska. So we have reached Alaska, southern part, but Alaska nonetheless. Back at the Touratech rally, I bought some additional rock straps to put on the top of my panniers. And it's really only for emergency, but I guess emergencies come in a variety of shapes and sizes and situations. In this case, it was the fact that we bought way too much kibble. And really it was my fault because I'm just kind of got tired of buying like three and four pound bags of kibble every two days. So that is strapped down to the top of the pannier on one side. On the other side, we have a pair of boots. These are my old boots. I got new boots that were shipped to me in Smithers just the other day in time for the rain. I guess I sort of tiptoed into this. I just wasn't ready to totally leave my old boots behind until I was certain that my new boots fit well and we're gonna break in. And as a result, I'm rolling with a pair of boots on top of my pannier. Oh my God. Good girl. Yeah, yeah. You're such a good girl. <laughs> Here at the Fish Creek Wildlife Observatory is where you're able to see bears. And in the high season, when the bears come, they're here to fish in the water here. It's the salmon that come up the river, right, to spawn. And then the bears, like, signal goes out, bears all just congregate, and they're just right down there in the river fishing. But there's a bit of a boardwalk here where it's a viewing platform. You can look down and you can actually see them. Uh, I haven't seen any yet. We're going to walk further down and see if there's some. The river here is absolutely crystal clear. I mean, seeing right through it like there isn't even water in there. I'm bummed that we're not here during the high season. Flint said that it would be another three weeks or so when the salmon come out and the fish and the bears will be here. Uh, so we're not really seeing any of the bears, but I'm glad that we came this way. It's on the way to the Salmon Glacier, which we are going to try and do next. It is overcast, so we probably likely won't see it, but at least we're going to give it a shot. And it is a nice, supposedly, uh, gravel road that leads there. There are a few puddles, but it's not muddy. At least that, that's what Flint said. So that's what we're going to try. It's going to be good practice for the Dempster. And so we are going to go and do that even if we can't really see the full glacier. When we pulled in, there was really nobody else around except for Flint from the National Forest Service. Because there were the signs that said no pets, Flint was nice enough to offer the use of his pickup truck so that Moxie could be inside a vehicle uh, while we both came in here to take a look. So that was just really sweet of him. Moxie, are you driving? Are you driving? <laughs> It was on the condition, the very strict condition, that Moxie does not go into the 24-pack of beer that he's got in, in the, the back truck. As long as she leaves that alone, we're all going to get along. Yeah. Moxie, will you let me in? Yeah? Will you let me in? Hitchhike. Isn't this like a lot of the Subaru commercials? I know, where the dog is the driver. <laughs> they call me sassy when I'm strolling down the street. I can be deadly when I find somebody lovely And now I'm ready like a kitty in a dress 
We're at the viewpoint for the Salmon Glacier. And unfortunately, and we sort of knew this, obviously, that it is foggy out, and so there is no view. Foggy AF. We came up here with the expectation that maybe the clouds would part and we'd see something. And it, and it did. On the way up, there were like two or three spots where you could actually see the, the blue glacier. Uh, up here, not so much. And it was beautiful. Gorgeous. But what we did do up here, as you can see, is Greg has made us coffees. And we're having a little break. Moxie's hucking around and she's having her food. Hucking and chomping. And, and it was plugging. a good uh, practice uh, on this dirt. It was wet. It was There was a little bit of mud. It, I wasn't skidding, which is nice. So I wasn't too worried about that after the first 10 minutes or so. But it was, again, good practice standing. And it just, it just reminds me of how much I need to continue to practice because I am pooped. But we do have to make our way back down. And uh, we're going to find a place to wild camp tonight. So we're thinking that it'll be closer to Stewart on the Canadian side. We are actually on the Canadian side right now. This is considered BC. And we'll cross over into Alaska, into Hyder again, and then into Stewart. could be an artsy person who found it and put it and then made an art or it could have been somebody who just put it on the table beside somebody who did the art. So here's my question for you. If you were to just swipe those rocks off the table and put them back on the ground where somebody found them, would that be a bad karmic action? Does it help when you like turn it like that? Here's the thing. If you don't want to have to put something in there and stir it, then you kind of agitate this in there. It churns, it churns it up and creates a stirring motion just with the gravitational pull of the water into the mug. I would like and some more, please. As a result, I do not need to stir. I have a perfect stir without actually stirring. So yes, I did need to do that. Okay, I would like some more water, please. By all accounts, Salmon Glacier is absolutely gorgeous. We wouldn't know other than for Google Images and we did get some really kind of nice clearing from the ride up. But the fact is that we're up here and it's misty and I guess mist could be beautiful, but it's not uncommon that like you'll watch a vlog or whatever and everything is always beautiful. Everywhere they go, everything they do, everything is always beautiful. And it sort of gives this sense that like there's no down moments or nothing is ever like the rain never sucks the snow never is cold or the view never blows and it doesn't mean that we are miserable doing this this is part of the experience but i mean to say that the view is beautiful <laughs> when you can't actually see anything i mean misses the point if it's like to share the experience then there's the ups downs and the i don't knows because i can't see it so this goes in the i don't know because i can't see it and maybe it's beautiful, and maybe it's not. The view from here is spectacular. <laughs> so much better than what you have over there. Tell me what you see, Greg. I can see all the mist from here. <laughs> from there you can see certain amount of mist, and you can see this rock. <laughs> but from here, I don't have this rock in the way, so I can just see all the mist. Well, I'm glad you're viewing that. <laughs> you take a picture for us. Five star. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm, I've got a picture of it right here. <laughs> Don't call me mean, I just want someone to love me Someone to lick my wounds and kiss my aching body My desperation knows no termination, baby Now would you love me if I was somebody else? We are all weather huckers. Moxie and I will huck in the hot, in the cold. We are misty huckers. We are snow huckers, <laughs> rain huckers. We will huck anytime, anywhere, under any conditions, just for fun. This was a snowy hucker. It's now a muddy hucker. It's still a cold hucker. But the beautiful thing about the mother hucker 
is that you soak it and it's clean again. The gravelly, wet, muddyish ride up here was done with the five kilos of dog food and with the old boots, I guess it's just practice for having to have the gas bags on here when we do the Dempster. Not too far from the heart, there's a star, go oh, have me as a reminder when it stings. When you're busy growing up, know that I'm right here. Back in Prince George, we bought the bear banger. I am taking responsibility for choosing the bangers. I like uh, the idea of a good banger. Um, I also like that uh, there's less likelihood that there could be a, a misfire on Jessica's part. I know, I can so see Or that frankly, happens. on my part, and probably more likely on my part, in terms of getting bear spray in my own face. So it is this little pen looking device, looks like a flashlight pen. And basically what you do is you take one of these cartridges, which are explosives, I guess, and you screw it in and you, you pull it back when you're going to use it and you fire it. That punctures the cartridge tank and shoots out the cartridge and makes an enormous noise. We need to test it out in order to like know what the hell we're doing so that we don't shoot ourselves in the face. Moxie, <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. So those bear bangers are pretty loud. It's like a little firework in your hand. You've got the initial bang and then the other one that comes after. So I can see why people were saying if you shoot it past the bear, it could really scare them to run towards you. But, you know, I think it does give me a little added sense of security to know that we do have this in the event that a bear is wandering around our campsite and we need something to make a loud noise. So I'm all for it. I, I don't know if we're going to have to use it down the line. We definitely do a lot of wild camping in places where there are bears. So it's good to have it. Don't know if we'll use it. If we do use it, I hope we get a chance to film the adventure and see what it's all about so that we can share it with you guys. The fishing in Cobb Lake was really great. We got to try out our telescopic reel. So I've been fishing. My dad taught me how to fish in Ontario uh, when I was young. And when I met Greg, Greg was all about the fly fishing, but I like prefer the bait fishing. I think I've said in a previous episode that it reminds me, it's, it's sort of like gambling for me of like putting out different baits to see what the fish are going to bite on. Um, it's just that feeling of satisfaction when they actually do bite and having the bobber go down and seeing it go down. There's, it's just, it makes me feel good. So I like bait fishing. Greg likes fly fishing, but we did get this telescopic reel, uh, rod and reel for bait fishing. They told us that the um, the spoons are what you should be using. So that's what we had. And this is the first time that we tried out the, the rod and reel. And it was great. Like it had really great action. I was able to cast out really far, which was useful because um, at Cobb Lake, we were we were camped there. And so we were just right by the by the shore. So we didn't sound like we had a boat or anything to go out. So I had to fish from the shore. So I really needed to cast out there to get to some of the deeper waters. And I did catch two fish as much as Gregory believes that I did not I did uh they just I just couldn't reel them all the way in <laughs> they they bit onto the onto the spoon and I saw them fling out of the water I just wasn't able to hook them so but I did see them there were two and they were trout so at least we I didn't get skunked but the reel held up really well and it was great because it's telescopic you just sort of shrink it back together um we put something around the reel and then greg puts it onto his bike and so next time when we go to another river or lake because there are so many around we can just take it out easily i did get a fishing license at canadian tire for bc i know that obviously in each of the provinces i'm gonna have to or territories i'll have to get a new one it is a it is a thing that I'll have to uh, account for in terms of financing because you do have to pay for it. 
but you know there are so many lakes and rivers along the way it, it would be a shame not to to give it a try and for us it's a nice break time you know we get to pull over at this beautiful lake i get to do a little bit of fishing moxie goes for a bit of a swim you saw how she was just swimming around me while i was fishing not that she's any help in catching fish she's more of obviously a deterrent because she makes so much noise like she is right now as she scratches herself beside me but the fishing, yes, I want to continue doing it as we can go north. Um, I've never done salmon fishing, so that could be something new for me, but we'll have to see as we continue. And now is my time to defame Gregory, my loving husband. You saw he got those new Garnet boots. He got the Garnet Midland. He has had those boots for years now, and it was time finally for him to get new ones. Uh, he had really worn them out. He actually had them sent to um, or brought them to like a shoemaker to get them to like glue some of the sole. They weren't waterproof anymore. And as we're going north, like we want to make sure that he's got like boots that aren't going to make his feet get wet, especially when it's cold out. So I looked all over and I couldn't find any in, in the States for the, the Garnet Midland boots, but they did have them in Germany. So we had them shipped from Germany to Smithers, BC, which is where he picked them up. He put them on and they're like the exact same boot. Like there is really nothing different about them except some of the tread looks a little bit different in the newer model, but they're the same boot. And yes, boots obviously feel different when you get them brand new versus when you've worn them in. So he did this thing, which he does with all of his stuff. It's like he gets a new one of the same thing, but he needs to like hold on to the old one just in case the new one isn't as good and he'd want to revert back. So you saw he's like carrying his old boots on top of his panniers as we're going into Alaska. So he's like carried them all the way along just in case they don't work out for him. Okay, but so that's in complete comparison to how I did it when I was in Seattle. I got the new Forma Adventure boots. I put them on and I basically threw away my other boots. So to be clear here, my other boots were all also worn just like Greg's, but they had a tear in them. So they weren't going to be waterproof at all. And it was time to give them up. So there was no way I was going to go back to them. This is the first time though, that I had tried these Forma adventure boots or any Forma boots for that matter. And these were my first ADV boots. So my other ones were like tour boots. They were leather, they were, they were soft, they weren't very tall. These ones were, were proper ADV boots that are stiff. So I put them on and it was like having bricks on my feet. I just was not used to that feeling. But everybody said, and even Greg was saying how like you got to wear them in. Like you're not used to wearing heavy boots like that, but you wear them in, they get softer, they get more comfortable and you'll be able to move around in them. So I just accepted that and said, okay, I'm going to wear these. That's the boot I'm going to have now. My other ones are gone. So I threw mine away and I did bitch and moan a little bit about my boots uh, for this beginning part. Now they, they were really, they are stiff. Like they're, they're big boots, you know, uh, even when I, I keep them loose and I, I take them off in the evenings. Um, so then I put on my running shoes just to give them my feet a break. But I don't know. I guess that's what adventure boots are supposed to be. They're not supposed to feel like comfy, like slip on sketchers or anything like that. They're, they're boots. They're meant to protect you. So I, I guess I'll just have to wear them in. But so that's the difference between Greg and I. You'll see Greg carrying his boots around and I will have my new boots on my feet and no regrets moving forward. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. Don't forget, uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Go Roughly. And if you want to know exactly where we are, you can go to GoRoughly.com and you'll see our GSAT track, which is our live GPS tracker. So you can see where we are at any given moment. Um, so you'll be able to see if we're on our way to you or if we've passed you or if you want to reach out to us, that would be awesome. But thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.